about uh, 6.20 uh, South Sudan local time, which is 16.20 GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, two Sudanese MiG-29 uh, jet fighters actually uh, dropped bombs on both east and west uh, of Bantu. Uh, in that, that is in the, the capital of Unity State. As a result, over Bantu, they dropped about eight bombs uh, in Bantu. And out of those eight bombs dropped, they were completely dropped on the civilian targets. Uh, nine people were wounded, two women and seven men, and one woman killed. These are all civilians. They also dropped on Mayom uh, town about six bombs, in which one woman was killed and two uh, men wounded. Now, this is the attitude that the Republic of Sudan, this aggressive attitude by waging, violating our airspace, uh, sending in ground troops in order to attack our positions, infringing on the territorial integrity of our country. And our president and government has been very clear that the government and the people of the Republic of South Sudan, we will defend our territorial integrity. We will not cross one inch into the territory of the Republic of Sudan because we believe that the outstanding issues of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement it can be negotiated through African Union High Implementation Panel. And we were actually progressing a lot in Addis Ababa. But it was the Republic of Sudan that waged a wanton attack on the 26th of March and then again on the 1st of April and finally on the 10th of April where they actually brought in 16 tanks, two brigades of Mujahideen and Sudan Armed Forces and Militia. And when we defended our position and pursued them, we actually pursued them, and they actually vacated. Today also, uh, one thing which is clear, they are also destroying and bombing actually the infrastructure at Hijlij. In fact, they are destroying all the oil installation, the central proce processing facility, which is, uh, which is in Hijlij, uh, and, with the and tanks. Dr. Benjamin, as far as the situation is concerned, as the government, have you complained to the AU or the United Nations? Definitely. We are launching immediately a protest note to the Security Council. We have alerted our embassy in New York and in Washington and who are in New York so that a protest note can be forwarded. We are also urging the armies, which is present here in the Republic of South Sudan, that here it is. The civilians are being killed by a neighboring country, bombing civilians, killing women. Uh, you have seen uh, what, what they have done in Khartoum, uh, contravening international laws of, of, uh, of diplomacy by raiding the house of, uh, of the residence of the vice president, abusing a young school girl who went there to collect her certificates. Now, uh, and that's why we are telling the Security Council, you ask us and the African Union to, to withdraw from Hijlij. And our president and the government said the concept, the principle of withdrawal from Hijlij is understood. But you must put in mechanism. Yes, withdrawal can happen as long as there are mechanisms to be put in place. Because the present attitude of the Republic of Sudan is an attitude of warmongering, attacking a sovereign state, a young state, using all its artillery, violating our airspace. There are, it is definite, they have even contravening our airspace here in Juba several times. And I think uh, the Republic of South Sudan has have held self-restraint we will continue with that self-restraint, and I'm sure we are still committed, as our president spoke to President of the United States, uh, in which, and also to the Secretary General of the UN, that uh, our president is willing to have a summit with President Bashir. His invitation for Bashir to visit Juba is open, but if President Bashir doesn't want to come to Juba, our president suggested he can choose anywhere on planet Earth and our president will be available to meet President Bashir so that they can have a dialogue to resolve these issues amicably. You and can and see what is the way forward? Uh, the way forward is that Khartoum must be told to, to stop its warmongering and that the Security Council as well as the African Union must, uh, must urge the Sudan in order to, to, to come to the peace table, which, which they had actually abandoned. We are still sitting at the peace table by the African Union High Implementation uh, Panel. So who is really waging war? It is not the Republic of South Sudan. We are also defending our lives. We are defending our resources. We are defending our citizens. And here they are. They are being killed with MiG-29. What is the Security Council doing about that? 
And the situation seems to be threatening to the people of South Sudan. What would you like to tell the citizens? I will tell our citizens that your government and your gallant forces are able to protect this territory, the sovereignty of the Republic of South Sudan. Your president and your government said we will never take our people to a senseless war that has no meaning. That we will not do. But we will, if we are attacked, we cannot be the sitting ducks. We will definitely protect our lives. We protect our, uh, our communities. We protect our resources. That is a duty. We are urging our citizens that the citizens of the Republic of Sudan who are here in the Republic of South Sudan, these are our brothers and sisters. Nobody should ever touch them. We should not behave the way they are behaving in Khartoum. You should not touch their properties. This message has come from our president. They are welcome here. They have the free choice. Should they want to become the citizens of this republic, they will follow the system which is put down. Should they want to go back to Sudan, they will go in their own time of choosing without any prejudice and without any... And we urge our citizens to listen to their government and to listen to their president that the Sudanese, the citizens of Sudan who are here, you are here having, staying among your brothers and sisters and they will be welcome. The behavior of Khartoum is a behavior we cannot follow. Thank you very much, Dr. Benjamin. Thank you very much. That was Dr. Benjamin, the